Russian Marines in Crimea pay their commanders to avoid being sent to fight in the Kursk region. The command is attempting to hide information about losses, according to information from the partisan movement Atesh. An agent from the 810th Marine Brigade reports that at the unit's permanent station in Sevastopol, personnel issues are arising due to most of the personnel being sent to the Kursk region. The message reads, According to partisans, almost daily, reports are received about new killed in action from the Kursk region and the brigade's command is trying to hide the facts of military deaths, although, as expected, without success. The soldiers in the unit are in low morale due to the constant deaths of their comrades and are trying in every possible way to remain in Crimea. As a result, some commanders are demanding bribes from subordinates to grant a delay and avoid urgent deployment to the combat zone. Atesh notes, those who managed to pay and stay at the base are pretending to work actively by setting up camouflage barriers and moving equipment around. The 810th Marine Brigade of Russia, based in the temporarily occupied Sevastopol, Crimea, is involved in the war in Ukraine in the Kursk region. In June, partisans obtained documents from the occupiers of the 126th and 810th Crimean Brigades. Notably, in November 2023, the Ukrainian Defense Forces struck the 810th Brigade, which they called retaliation for the 128th Brigade, which was targeted by the Russian forces at the beginning of that month. At the time, the 128th Brigade, stationed in a frontline village in the Zaporizhia region, had been assembled for an award ceremony for Ukraine's Day of Missile Forces and Artillery. Recently, Ukrainian paratroopers said they have captured two Russian Marines from a brigade that reportedly murdered Ukrainian captives earlier this month. Kyiv said the 155th Independent Marine Brigade of the Russian Pacific Fleet was seen in drone footage shooting dead Ukrainian captives following an attack on Ukrainian drone operators on October the 10th. A retaliatory attack in Kursk between the warriors of the 95th Brigade of the DSHV, the Ukrainian Air Defense Forces, and the Russian Marines resulted in the surrender of two Russian prisoners, according to a Facebook post made by the airborne assault troops of the armed forces of Ukraine. The Ukrainian armed forces wrote that Ukrainian troops mercilessly destroyed the occupier, but mercifully preserve his life if the enemy drops weapons and surrenders captive. There are three more countries that are ready to send troops to the war in Ukraine. Former U.S. State Department official David Tafuri told 24 Canal about this in a commentary. According to him, the deployment of North Korean troops in Russia confirms what the West feared, that Russia's allied countries, which are exiles, will actively help the Kremlin in the war. What we should be concerned about is that there are several other countries that are on Russia's side, particularly Iran, Syria, China, and that can help meet the need for people that can be sent to Ukraine. Tafuri also noted that the occupying country has already lost many troops on Ukrainian territory, so North Korea satisfies the need for manpower and the reputational need of Russian leader Putin to show the world that Moscow has allies. They can also provide some of the components and things that Russia needs to keep its military-industrial complex running. The real impact from a strategic point of view is probably not that significant. However, this does not mean that the DPRK does not have a combat-ready army, but it provides additional troops, the former State Department official concluded. Recall the structure of world politics is evolving in ways that challenge American global power more than at any time since the end of the Cold War. China, meanwhile, has been accused of powering Russia's war machine with substantial amounts of dual-use goods like microelectronics and machine tools, which can be used to make weapons. The US for the first time penalized two Chinese firms for supplying complete weapon systems. All three countries have denied they are providing such support. Taking stock of the Emerging Cooperation, a Congress-backed group that evaluates US defense strategy dubbed Russia, China, Iran and North Korea this summer as an axis of growing malign partnerships. The fear is that a shared animosity towards the US is increasingly driving these countries to work together, amplifying the threat that any one of them alone poses to Washington or its allies, not just in one region but perhaps in multiple parts of the world at the same time. 
and for Tehran, weighted by hefty Western sanctions and embroiled in the expanding Middle Eastern conflicts with US-backed Israel, supplying Russia weapons is thought to potentially boost its defense sector, while its ties with Beijing and Moscow provide it with diplomatic cover. Commercial satellite images reveal that North Korea has carved at least two large trenches across roads and rail lines on its heavily armed border with South Korea since it blew up the northern sections of cross-border routes earlier this month. Tensions between the Koreas are at their highest point in years as North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has repeatedly showcased his expanding nuclear weapons and missile programs, while reportedly providing Russia with munitions and troops to support President Vladimir Putin's war in Ukraine. Kim has vowed to sever relations and abandon the long-standing goal of reconciliation with South Korea, whose conservative government has taken a hard line on the North's nuclear ambitions. Satellite images taken Wednesday by Planet Labs PBC showed a trench cut across a road and a rail line running through the western part of the demilitarized zone between the Koreas. Work on the trenches appears to have begun shortly after North Korea staged choreographed demolitions of a road near Kaesong, a western North Korean border city, and a combined road and rail section near the Korea's eastern border on October 15. In Planet Labs images examined by the Associated Press, the first sign of the trenches appeared on October 17, after cloud cover blocked the view for the four previous days. The western trench is 1.7 kilometers west of Dorasan Station, the last station on the line on the South Korean side that used to run to a now-shuttered factory complex in Kaesong. The factories, which symbolized a past era of rapprochement between the rivals, were jointly run by the Koreas until Seoul shut it down in 2016 over a North Korean nuclear test. Analysts at the North Korea-focused website 38 North, who first reported the existence of the trenches, said the work began almost immediately after North Korea blew up the roads and rail sections. The analysts estimated that the western trench is about 125 meters long and about 7 meters wide, with large piles of dirt on either side of it. The purpose of the trench and dirt is unclear beyond it being some type of blockade that is intended to sever the transportation links. The mound could be part of the barrier, or it could be a temporary product of the construction work, the analysts wrote. They said several trucks were still visible at the site, indicating that work is not yet complete. They estimated the trench at the eastern crossing is slightly longer at 150 meters and has dirt and land clearance only on one side.